The date is July 1st, 1944. American and British Commonwealth forces have launched a successful invasion of Nazi-occupied France. And within a month, they will liberate Paris and create a path to march onto the German heartland. Meanwhile in the east, the Soviet Red Army managed to reverse the tides of war and is now trampling its way to Berlin. Now fighting a losing war on two fronts, it is clear Germany's days are coming to an end. The end of the Second World War is in sight, and a new world must rise from the ashes of the old. Within the comfortable confines of the Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 countries convene to discuss its formation. The central questions to be answered at Bretton Woods were how will the world's governments establish economic order? How will the economic chaos that followed the previous war be avoided? In many ways, the Bretton Woods meeting was held to specifically prevent the economic turmoil following World War I. The prevailing economic problem during the interwar period was that many countries abandoned the previously held gold standard and began excessively printing their currencies. This ultimately devalued their currencies and boosted exports, which could close any existing trade deficits. In effect, it incited trade wars, spoiled international relations, drove hyperinflation, and was a contributing factor to the Great Depression. These sobering memories moved the nations to establish a fixed monetary system with disciplined adherence to the gold standard. In other words, they wanted a controlled monetary system without floating currencies, drastically different to what we have now, 85 years on. What gives a currency its value is an attachment to a useful and common commodity. In other words, a currency's value is linked to the bartering potential of a commodity. If the currency was gone theoretically, one could always barter with that commodity, but with less liquidity. Historically, this commodity has been grains or iron, but in recent history, it has been gold. Part of the Bretton Woods Agreement was to pay 35 US dollars to an ounce of gold, thereby providing stability to the new system. The US dollar can then be converted to the sterling, the mark, the franc, or any other bread and woods agreement currencies, but at a fixed rate. Central banks were given the right to exchange their US dollar reserves for gold held by the Americans. Literally speaking, this agreement made the American dollar as good as gold and came with great privileges for the Yanks. It should be noted that the US Federal Reserve controlled three quarters of the world's gold at the time. This fact gave them incredible leverage for negotiating a monetary policy completely dependent on the US dollar. This would have a lasting effect on our economic system. After all, they had the gold, they made the rules. The Bretton Woods Agreement crucially also established the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, which functions as a lending mechanism for stabilizing a central bank's current accounts. A nation has a current account deficit when it spends more for imports than what they receive for their exports. Conventional thinking at the time saw running a deficit as a dangerous thing. Under Bretton Woods, whenever a country incurs an account deficit, it is eligible for a loan from the IMF in order to close that deficit. This ultimately serves as an alternative to currency devaluation, which was commonly seen during the interwar period. The amount a central bank can borrow from the IMF is based on a quota and subscription system. When joining the IMF, a central bank is assigned a quota, which is essentially a bill based on their re relative economic power, to which they are obliged to pay periodically. 25% of that payment must be in gold, or the United States dollar, and the rest in the nation's currency. In addition, the IMF plays an important surveillance role in government finances and trade as well as advisory duties for central banks. The role of the IMF has evolved, but it still exists to provide stability to the global monetary system. Typically, the IMF makes headlines nowadays whenever an indebted nation runs into repayment troubles. With the establishment of the USD gold peg and the IMF, the Federal Reserve began to lend massive amounts at low interest towards rebuilding society and the economy of a post-war Western Europe. Since American dollars were so widely distributed, it found its way into the central bank reserves of every country. This meant the USD was incredibly liquid, and hence facilitated most trade between nations, and thereby propelling it to the status as a currency standard. However, as America began to print more dollars, an issue began to rise. The global gold stocks largely remained unchanged, as the US dollar peg undervalued the price of gold, and therefore could not ensure a profitable production of it. 
Because of these factors, the amount of gold in circulation would one day exceed the dollar value of all the world's gold. This was known as the Triffin Dilemma, and was concerning because the Feds would one day not be able to meet a sudden exchange demand, which could subsequently collapse the global monetary system. Dollars in circulation officially overtook gold reserves in 1964, but by that time, several political and economic measures were implemented to dissuade central banks from cashing in their dollars for gold. The common sense measure was to reduce the amount of dollars in circulation. The simplest way to achieve this was for the Feds to increase the interest rates, which would attract US dollars back into the United States for investment, thereby taking them out of circulation. This is known as a tight monetary policy. However, this policy would also reduce domestic spending, as individuals and businesses would also prefer to invest their money. Consequently, the economy would shrink and a recession occurred when this monetary policy was implemented in 1957 and again in 1961. Other measures included manipulating government bond yields, imposing taxes whenever US dollars left the United States, and threatening to pull out military support for West Germany. These measures were considered short-term successes at the time, but by the mid-60s, the Federal Reserve accelerated the printing of US dollars to fund the escalating war in Vietnam along with the expensive social programs introduced by President Lyndon B. Johnson. As a general rule of economics, if the supply of money within a system increases beyond acceptable levels, inflation occurs, and thus, the spending drove America into an inflationary period from 1965 and into the early 80s. Meanwhile, the excess supply of US dollars entered the European central banks. With no way to stop the inflows or a way to offload the US dollar, Europe too experienced inflationary pressure. As a result of the excess dollar to gold ratio and rising global inflation, confidence began eroding in the Federal Reserve's ability to exchange dollar for gold. Although the US applied heavier political dissuasion for such an act, Britain and France in early August 1971 announced their intention to convert their dollar reserves for gold. However, only one third of their gold demands could be met by the Feds. Therefore, to avoid complete disaster, on the 15th of August 1971, President Richard Nixon put the US dollar gold peg on hold before completely eradicating it in 1973. The Bretton Woods Agreement has come to an end.